Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to test vector equality here in R. So let's just make our note as usual, testing vector equality. And so just to dive right on in here, um, you know, one would assume uh, you can use the equal equal function here. And so, you know, let's just, uh, let's give this a try. And so let's say we have A and A is going to be one to five. And then B is going to be, you know, one, five, four, three, two. So still the same number of, you know, observations here in this vector. And then finally, I'm gonna create C here just so we can see a true and false positive on this. And C is going to be one to five as well. Uh, so let's run these real quick. There's A, B, and C. As you can see in the top right, we have A, B, and C. And let's say A is equal to B and run that. And it kind of works, but it doesn't really give us the answer we're looking for here. So, you know, yes, it, it works, but it doesn't answer the simple question, are these equal? Right, I, I, I'm really just wanting like yes or no, and more specifically, right, uh, this would be like true or false. And so you can imagine now if I had a massive list of like, I don't know, let's say quant finance here, I'm working in credit risk, and I've got a million observations or maybe 5 million observations, and I'm comparing two columns with 5 million observations, uh, I'm not gonna go through and look and see, okay, is true and false all the way there. And sure, you could do an if statement, say if any of these are true, you know, one, if false, zero, and that's really just too much work. So I'll note here, as I mentioned before, you know, equal equal is actually a vectorized function, just like R is a vectorized language as we've talked about in the past. Um, so it's really, right, the function itself is really the two kind of parameters here or inputs of like A and B, for example. But, you know, there's another solution for this. So one solution that's quite easy to use um, is going to be the all statement or the all function here. And this is quite easy to do. You can use it for all kinds of functions as well. But basically we're just saying all, and then we're gonna put A equals equals B, and we're gonna run this. And you can nest different functions inside of the all function here. But what it's doing now is it's doing what we just said. It's gonna look at the entire list and you know see if all are true or all are false. In this case, it is false. All of them are not true. So testing for true here, right? That's what we're looking for with the equals. So A is not equal to B. Uh, quickly though, let's just do the opposite. So let's just do A is equal to C because we know these should be equal. Let's see if it works. And of course, it says true. So all these are the same. So A and C are equal, but A and B are not. And I'll give you guys another solution here. So another solution is using the identical function here. And again, this is exactly what it sounds like. You type identical, and then you put A comma B, and we run that. And of course, it says false. And if we run identical and do A and C, and run that, it's gonna say true. So identical works the same in the situation as all is working here. It is literally checking that they are exactly identical. So I'll put a note here, right? Be careful because identical means exactly the same. So it means identical, right? Uh, but what do I mean by this? So let's say we have D and let's just create D here. And D is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna run that. And then let's see, you know, identical. So we'll type in the function here, identical. And we're gonna type in A and D. So, right, looking at the numbers we have, right, A, if you remember, is going to be uh, one to five. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, D is one, two, three, four, five and we're gonna check these and we'd expect it to be true, but it's false, right? This seems kind of odd. So what is going on here? Um, you know, why is this false? And to give you the answer to this and what you should be thinking is, you know, just type in type of, 
do a, right? Something seems kind of off. Okay, type a is an integer. And then you type in type of and do D and D is a double. So kind of an interesting note here. So an interesting fact, I guess, not really a note. Interesting fact though, um, the colon here uh, creates integers and the C function creates doubles. So what I mean by this just quickly is just like it is one, two, three, four, five, except for just the type of data itself is an integer. Um, again, the type of data for D is going to be a double. So one is the same as one, but the actual format themselves are not the same type. And so since they're not the same type, even though it's exact same, uh, identical is going to throw us and say false. So you need to kind of be weary of this little catch here. You might have to check and say, okay, you know, are, are the types the same? The data look the same? Okay, let's do the identical statement here and see if it all works. So anyways, that's how you check if two vectors are going to be equal in R. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.